this little video is about battery chargers and to some extent about perception. Now in the past I've picked up battery chargers out of scrapyard and I remember one particular time down in uh, Oxford the guy went oh we've chucked that out it stopped working and uh, I took it anyway and uh, it turned out to be a loose connection in one of the crocodile clips so you know, just because it's not working doesn't mean that it doesn't work anyway this particular charger again I picked this up because it was there and it's quite beefy but it's got some bad signs so let's just sort of zoom in and have a look at the various bits that would make you think hmm So the wires have been chopped off. Well if it's in a scrapyard somebody could have just chopped the wires off because of the weight copper. We've got a connection missing there on the positive 12 volt um, and there's obviously a plastic guard around it at some point. Well I'm assuming so because of that uh, light coloured ring around the bolt maybe somebody's just taken the wires off the negative connections not there at all again they have just removed stuff um, it's a bit sort of it looks reasonably tidy but there's a few dints but that could have been from the scrapyard let's have a look round the side we've got quite a few screws missing that's probably a bad sign and the pat testing last year due again June 17 so it's still in test so why was it scrapped very good question is it a reflection on modern society or have they done something silly because there is a warning on the top of the the charger and we'll just have a look at that so somebody could have uh, tried to crank a car over or a truck or something like that and maybe damage the rectifier there is a fuse in fact there are two fuses let's just zoom out there's a fuse there which is on the DC side and there's a fuse here which is obviously on the AC side doesn't want to uh, focus we're going to investigate this and just see whether it's a serviceable unit or not I suspect the rectifier has gone but I might be wrong it has been known one of the clips is missing from the amp meter but luckily I found it in the bottom of the, the box so there it is so hopefully that's all right so there's the transformer and the top windings are the high voltage side and they look bright and coppery varnished no evidence of a blue smoke dragon no bluing no nothing and down the bottom I don't know whether we can see it that's the low voltage high current size and these big fat cables here go to the rectifier and to be able to test the rectifier we need to undo those two bolts to isolate it from the transformer so let's get on with that so let's just undo these bolts and if you notice I'm using spanners a lot of these so-called engineers on uh, YouTube they're all using adjustable spanners and adjustable spanners are only for in the field 
or if you haven't got the correct size spanner and of course the other thing I noticed they do is extreme file abuse yeah they're just going on a on a piece so they're going ee 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 the way to use a file to prevent it going blunt is to do that and then lift because pulling it backwards blunts the file and I saw uh, this on some video pulling the file backwards it is ridiculous so that's that's it that's those removed So here we are, that's the low voltage AC in. Now, both of those, as I've said, are AC. So if you imagine each one of them has a sine wave going into it. And the top half of the curve is, let's say for instance, positive, And the bottom half of the curve is negative. So what the diodes do and there are two diodes per connection is one diode is one way round so that the positive sniffs off one way and the other diode is the other way around so the negative sniffs off the other so it basically splits the waveform into positive and negative and both connections do that so Positives from both both connections go off one way and the negatives go off the other way. But of course it's ripply because it's made up of a series of half curves. Hence there's a little capacitor there. And if you want the uh, DC to be a lot smoother you put a lot bigger capacitor in. So the capacitor is constantly charging up and discharging to fill in the little divots between each curve. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's test it now. So here we are and we've got the meter set on continuity. It's a little diode shape or a musical note. Switch her on. These are a bit mucky, I'll just clean those up. It looks like they've had a bit of high voltage DC abuse. That's better. <coughs> Let's just get that right. So that's the negative. No, it's not. The negative comes up through the amp meter, through the fuse, that's the negative side, and this is the positive side. That looks about right. Not quite sure how this works, but let's, let's see. So Nothing. Turn the, the, the wire, the probes the other way around. Yes, we've got connection. So one way it doesn't, the other way it does. So let's swap these round and go to the other side of the rectifier. Nope. Yes. So that's a yes to the negative and it should be a no to the positive. And turn that round and that's a yes to the positive. So from this one we go to a no, oh yeah, a yes to the positive. And a no. And then the other way round, that's a no, and that's a yes. So that rectifier, to me, looks alright. 
it's neatly dividing the waveform into positive and negatives. So why else could it have been scrapped? Let's just have a, a look at the back of the rectifier and there need a screwdriver. Here is a thermal cutout. Now I wonder that looks a bit melty there. I wonder if that can be the culprit. We need to test that. So we're still on continuity and I've just eased that terminal back. Oh that's alright. So the thermal cutout's still working. I think the only thing to do is to give this battery charger a, a trial because everything seems to check out. And because it's got a pack test it means that this has been in a works or an institution of some form where they have to have it all tested and your average manager would have just gone oh scrap it get a new one so we popped it all back together wired various things up but there's something I thought this battery charger was all right you know, general design wise given the realms of modern production but there's something that I'm not quite happy about and it what it entails is that these two big wires here come from the transformer and you have a negative and a positive. Now the negative obviously goes to the negative connection the positive goes to the 24 volt connection and the 12 volt positive comes directly let me see if I can get it where are we there we go it's down there remember that one that was loose that positive 12 volt connection comes directly from the transformer. Let's tip it up and see if we can get a better view. That might do it as long as it doesn't fall over. Get a bit more light on the subject. See that there, that is the 12 volt connection and you follow these wires, the pair of them, and it goes directly to the transformer. So what they seem to be doing is the 12 volt size side is only half wave rectified, which is not very nice. So you've got a negative from the rectifier and a positive effectively but it's AC half wave rectified a bit odd why on earth would they do something like that hmm anyway let's see if it works so here we go 12 volt positive is there and I've just got that bit of Paxine insulation there AC input negative so there's the positive negative to negative positive to positive no spark that's good get some AC power switch it off minimum one on okay something's happening yeah stay still 
put it on number two, goes up a bit, put it on boost, goes up a bit. Right. Now the question is, is it telling lies? So let's get the trusty clamp meter. Okay, so it is telling lies. That shows 5.7 and the meter shows 10. Let's try it on the negative side because obviously the positive here is effectively AC. That shows 4.2 and the main meter is 7, something like that, 7.58. So we've got a huge anomaly there and it could be the fact that it's half wave rectified. I suppose the only answer there if you wanted to use this is either accept that it's telling lies or put a rectifier on that 12 volt positive. You could just use a standard square rectifier with the four pins but only use one AC output just to get the positives. So just as an experiment, I've got a bit of a rectifier here and I've taken the output from that 12 volt positive through the diodes and then I've got a jump lead off there to the battery and now battery charging is 3.8 and and the meter here shows slightly less so we've got an anomaly maybe it's just that meter that's wrong so on the back of the meter you have the shunt which um, uh, most of the power goes through that and a little bit goes through the meter and if you can see there there are two bolts focus come on pay attention there you go okay so I've tightened those up they were reasonable but they I tightened them up a bit when we're talking DC low voltage uh, you can lose bits everywhere. So let's go and look at the meter again now. So the clamp meter is showing 3.8 and the other meter is showing something similar. So maybe that was it. I don't know. I'll just um, get rid of this supplementary rectifier you hear the arcing of DC and it's gone up slightly so both of them the clamp meter where's the shows 4.9 and that shows 4.9 make of this what you will and this was another battery charger that I got out of the scrap. Um, the glass was missing off the amp meter and it was just generally very rusty. No cables on it whatsoever. But And I've written Davenset on there because I found a similar one on eBay so I knew what it was. Rusty, horrible, Looked like a complete waste of time. 
one of the switches was seized but it actually proves to be a very nice variable um, battery charger it's got a coarse variation and a fine variation and it will go up to 30 volts which is brilliant but to look at it when it was laid in the scrap you wouldn't have given it a second glance so it's all in the perception